So if you're if you're used to like beating yourself and you know calling yourself a choker and calling yourself every other name in a book, um, I think now's the time to stop doing that. Um, it's, it's pulls a never-ending learning process, and you're you're gonna learn every day. And some of those lessons are really tough. You just have to accept it as. Okay, I did something wrong. Um, it's not time to, you know, crucify myself. 
um, it's time to work on whatever I did wrong. And, you know, I can be better. This is the place I can be better. So what you're seeing as I pause right there is me telling myself it's time for a break. It's time to go outside, smoke a cigarette, and have a bit of self-talk. At the same time, it's also not time for hugs, you know? I mean, there's a line in there where, you know, you don't need to be babies. Um, but being brutal in yourself, I'm telling you, it's counterproductive, man. I used to do it real bad. I mean, really, really bad. And then I'd wake up the next day and it'd be the first thing I did in the morning. I just relentlessly, just abusively, just, just call myself every name in the book and thinking that that would, you know, that would inspire me to try harder. This. Let me try it harder. This, this does not like take incredible physical strength to play pool. <coughs> now there are other times when you're not concentrating at the level that, that you're supposed to. But if you really look back at um, these three screw ups here, and I got bad shape on every one of those balls that I was shooting and I missed. So let's go back and look at that. Alright, here's a missed shot in the first game. And after this, we'll go back a little bit and see what led up to that ugliness. So everything's going right in the early part of the game. Got I could have got a little bit better. You can always get a little bit, well, not always, but usually you can get a little bit better on the next ball, but, um, you know, that wasn't bad. I'd like to be a little bit more off the rail. Uh, but the, here, here's the big issue right here, how I shot the five ball. And so we're going to go back and look at what I should have done with that five ball. You see how bad I got on, on the six ball? I'm way on the wrong side of the line. So let's go back and look at the five ball shot and after I shoot it, I'll tell you what I should have done and what I did wrong. Alright, this is the shot. And if you look at the angle of the cue ball coming off the five ball, we see this. And it's going to be the exact opposite angle coming off that wrap. So I wind up with this and on the 50 yard line in really bad shape on the six and the only thing I can do is try to stun it back or draw stun it back for a shot on the seven ball. But I could have got a much better shot on this if I had put a little bit of left hand English on it to spin it off that rail toward this angle here. You want to be on the right side of the six ball. You know, there's a chance you might get straight in, but straight in is good. You can just draw it back for much better position on the 7, or you could go to this left-hand side rail and bounce a little bit back up table for a much better shot on the 7 ball. And let's take a look at the second game, and here's the missed shot right here. And you can see I just kind of rolled it up in an effort to get it on the 9 ball. And here's what led up to this, but it really wasn't that much of a train wreck. It comes down to, to one shot and the way I shot the seven ball. And I had I had some options on the seven ball and I chose the worst option. So, you know, this I left myself a little difficult on the five and then I get I just decided to bounce off the rail and I got straight in on the six. So I had to hit a step shot on the six. And while this shot, you know, I could have got better on the sevens, I, I still I shot it all wrong. For some reason, I shot it with bottom right. And you can see it, it you know, barely gets off the rail. It gets the center of the table, but I'm way down the table. So let's take a look at the graphics. And really, I don't know what made me shoot a shot like this. I mean, this comes up all the time. And I shoot it with top left all the time, so it's not an uncommon shot. 
If I chose to draw it and it comes out to about here, which is really a dreadful shot on the A, when all I had to do is put top left on it and go through your rows and bounce out. And, you know, if you come up a little bit short on the A, you'll still be fine. If you come up right on the line, you're still fine. If you go a little bit long, as long as it's not too long, then you're still fine on the A book. So your margin of error is pretty big, and overall it's just a much easier shot. It's a much better way to go, and you're a whole lot closer to the A without that big, huge angle. And now we're going to take a look at the third game, and here's a missed shot right here. Now this one's a little bit different. It wasn't about position. I got great position on it. Even though I did have to recover, still we'll go back a little bit and take a look. Now, I get bad on the 7, but then I recover and get pretty much perfect on the 8 ball. So what's the reason I miss this 8 ball? I'm going to explain it to you in a minute. You know, when I went back and looked at this, I, I must have looked at it a hundred times. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? And I know this, so I don't, I don't know. Something's going off with my brain. Yeah, here's where I get bad on the 7. Because, you know, I recover from this and get perfect on the 8. And I looked at it at first, I thought I must have jumped up or something. Or my, my stroke was just bad. I dropped my elbow or something. And that's not it. I shot this good, and it's got a good stroke on it. So let's take a look at the graphics. And this moment right here, what you're saying to yourself right after something like that is absolutely crucial. It's either going to kill you, or it's going to make you a great player. Here's what I chose to shoot, um, and I'm convinced that that's the right shot. Now, some players might disagree with me and want to do it this way. Other players might want to do it this way, but I'm convinced that this is the right shot for me. And if you take a good look, I'm putting a whole lot of right-hand English on this cue ball. I'm not putting any top on it or any bottom on it. It's just straight right-hand English. And the problem comes down to the way I have it aimed, and I'm aimed on this eight ball as if I'm center, dead center ball, and there's not going to be any deflection. When the fact is, when you put this much English on the cue ball, there is going to be deflection. And I'm not trying to get you to go out and buy a $600 shaft. That's not my agenda here. You don't need that. So if you're behind the cue, putting this much right-hand English on the cue ball, you can't expect it not to deflect. It's going to deflect, and it's going to deflect left, coming off your cue tip. So while you have it aimed here, it's actually hitting right here. And this is what caused the eight ball to rattle. This is what caused the miss. So you actually have to aim to miss. You have to aim right here in order to make this ball without rattling. And I know all this. I use deflection all the time, every day of my life, to my advantage. But for some reason, whatever reason, I, I just I didn't even consider it on this shot. I took it for granted. And so it all comes back. All three examples are a result of lack of concentration, not thinking it through, and taking shots for granted. So I'm just kind of lollygagging through these games here and just, you know, not thinking. So you almost have to see yourself as two people and one's the player and the other one is the instructor. The pool instructor who's also your best friend and a great player. And so the player comes to you and, and asks for advice on what to do. You're going to call him a choker and, you know, get all these horrible names and just walk away from him? So what would you tell him if that's your situation? And that's what you have to tell yourself. And so you, he's, if he's got, you know, three brain cells, he's, he's going to say, you need to work on this or that or you jumped up on that shot or your wrist twisted or you know, so you, or you just got bad shape you're supposed to miss this shot you got bad shape so you need to work harder on your position play and we'll get it together and you know we'll 
be better when we come out of this. Right? That's what you tell your best friend, right? So that's what you gotta tell yourself. And you're not gonna say, let's go get some ice cream. And you're not gonna say, you're a fucking joker, man. You suck at this game, you're never gonna be good. That, that would make you abusive, man. And, and uh, you know, if you're not gonna be abusive to your best friend, don't be abusive to yourself, dude. Just, uh, it's time to live and learn. It's an ice cream. So, all right. Uh, here's a long outro on what happened after I had a little intervention with myself and went for a walk and smoked a cigarette. And I had a little meeting with my instructor, whose name happens to be John. And it all came down to... John, uh, you're going to have to get your head into it if you want to play better than this. And you're very capable of playing better than this, so let's see what happens. And so grab yourself a beer or some chips and dip or whatever floats your boat and kick back and uh, let's check this out.
Topics that uh, come up on Rod and Sheldon's page come up on my page too. And I'm convinced that there's probably people out there who think I'm copying him or following up his video topic. Um, <laughs> that's not it. I think uh, Ron and I just think a lot alike. And that's probably because we have very similar backgrounds. But I do watch his videos. Um, maybe maybe they just kind of get stuck there. I, I start thinking about them, and they, you know, um, the next day I find myself at the pool room, you know, thinking, let's work on this. But not consciously linking back to Ron's page. It's just really I just I just think it's a weird coincidence. Some kind of weird connection. Um so if you've noticed that, um you know, I, I don't copy anyone <laughs> and you can see that. Maybe he's copying me, you ever think of that? He's just getting to the video first. I mean, this is an important topic, right? And it comes up for every single pool player. Everyone. There's, there's people that, that miss under pressure, and it's not just the amateur. And take a good look. So, knowing that it's an extremely important topic, let's cover it. I run hit on it, and I hit on it too. I don't know, what is it, two days later? Um, I think we both recognize that this is an important issue, so let's do it. I think it, 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 the moral of the whole video is uh, mental issues, uh, lack of concentration, psychological stuff, taking balls for granted, uh, not being all there. These destroyed pool games, you have to be all there if you want to be a great pool player. I mean, there's just no other way. You take, take a real good look at these guys playing. And you can see, just by their mannerisms, that they're all there. You ain't thinking about nothing else. <clears throat> it's a big issue.